Hey, look. Trump got indicted today in Florida. Second time in what? Less than six months. Got indicted by the, you know, the city of Manhattan, state of New York, uh, for campaign funding violations when he paid off Stormy Daniels uh, for, you know, sleeping with her when, uh, you know, Melania had, was stealing stitches from having Barron. But the, uh, today was no joke. And I think the country is really becoming aware of the seriousness of what Trump did because his own people, you know, the the, pe the actual people that, I'm not gonna say count because everybody counts, but the actual people that uh, have some pull in the Republican Party, not in the House, talking more about senators, are starting to basically say that, you know, Trump is in trouble and he deserves what he gets. His his main man, Bill Barr, has been saying it for the last couple weeks that this indictment is, is, is no joke because Trump is guilty. There's no way that he can say he wasn't guilty. Now, the next level is, the next big question is, what did Trump why did he do it and what did he do with it after he got it and maybe perhaps that is like you know the card that jack smith is holding up his sleeve if they actually know that maybe he did talk to some foreign powers or you know super ass rich arms dealers i, I don't know but then you got to look at this thing like you know the uh arab you know saudis they gave uh Jared Kushner like two billion dollars and we still can't figure out for what I mean the official reason didn't make sense because Eric you know Jared Kushner isn't, isn't a money manager the Kushner real estate has a is just about broke because of all the mismanagement but you know that's I guess peas and onions carrots and potatoes I, I, I don't know but there's too many questions and this is something that Bill Barr has 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 a uh, pointed out uh, this is something that a lot of former Republican DOJ prosecutors have also said and in general people that know anything about the judicial system and understand you know uh, intelligence and the importance of maintaining intelligence and trying to keep stuff secure they understand how dangerous Trump's actions were whether he did it out of vanity because you know he, he thinks that he owns everything anyway once he touches it in its mind you from his you know speeches and stuff it, you get that feeling like it, it, he's arrogant and ignorant at the same time you know I did it because I was the president and they were mine when you know and he cites like the presidential records that when it's like a, a flagrant lie, a, a misleading, misinformation. The Presidential Records Act actually states what belongs to the president when they leave the White House. And it boils down to nothing. Every scrap of paper, every tape, every, every message, every email, every letter, every, you know, even gifts. They all belong to the United States government, not to the individual president. He was supposed to turn it over. Now, he, you know, he deflects because Biden had paperwork in his garage and uh, Pence had some couple documents. But you gotta look at it like this. Biden and Pence, even though, I mean, they, you know, they got pretty hefty security classes because of their position. They were vice presidents when it happened. It doesn't make them any less guilty or any less, uh, I guess, fucking, you know, uh, incompetent. I can, you know, if I can use that word. But they, it's, it's a whole different situation. And also, once they found that they had documents, when their people, when their staff found they had documents, they, they did the right thing. They immediately contacted the FBI, DOJ, you know, national security people, and said, look, we don't know how this happened, but we got these documents in our possession and we want to get them transferred back to the government, back to the people that they belong to, so they can go to the archives. Archives, 
went back and forth with Trump for over a year trying to get it back so that one they didn't want to embarrass the country let people know that 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 many secrets were in the hands of a madman and Trump just stonewalled them obstructed them lied openly lied he lied to his own lawyers to make them generate lies signed affidavit saying that they had found all of the documents and turned them over and the crazy thing is some of the lists uh, of the things that were there were seriously, seriously uh, sensitive documents and they can't find them. And ain't nobody really talking about that. You know Trump's not going to talk about it. But the other thing is the issue of the judge. Now, the plea hearing, which was held today, that was supervised by one judge, but the judge overlooking the whole process is none other than Eileen Cannon of the infamous federal judge, Trump appointee, that basically tried to bail Trump out the first go-round. You know, they tried to, you know, fancy it up and make everything look as light as possible by saying, you know, well, she's a hack, she shouldn't have been there, she doesn't have the judicial chops to be in a position to handle a trial of this magnitude and she should also recuse herself because the 11th district has a policy about judges that have exhibited bias if they have to be involved with the same persons again they automatically recuse themselves or prosecution can appeal and the appellate section of the 11th district will recuse that judge, force them to recuse. And that is a career ender. But we don't know how, you know, how deeply aligned or how deeply loyal Eileen Cannon is to Donald Trump. We can only guess. But it's a crazy situation. Now, late in the, late in the procedure, Jack Smith tried to, you know, presented an alternate plan, an end around. Hey, because Trump is, you know, living in New Jersey now, and he is uh, defendant number one, and the documents, you know, we found some stuff in Bedford, you know, in New Jersey. Why don't we just, because of the issues, you know, the violent, the the higher tendency of Trump supporters to be violent in Florida for everybody's security why don't we move the trial to New Jersey where Trump's other official residence is and guess what that cuts Eileen Cannon out of the picture it also delays the trial if they approve this measure but it Eileen Cannon has nothing to do with it because even if she acts right and the jury does find Trump guilty which if they are given half a chance the way this case is built they probably will she can still overturn the jury's verdict give a direct verdict and that's whatever she feels like that comes out of her mouth even if they find him guilty she's still in charge of the sentencing phase and she can give him some bullshit sentence it's better to get her out of the picture completely that way there's more transparency and there will be no questions at the end in the minds of the American people. Now, all that both to the side. The trial, after Trump did this, the first thing he did, and, 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 and the judge warned everybody about public appearances connected with this upcoming trial. It, was, it wasn't a complete gag order. But it was about as close as it could get without being a gag order. They, Trump leaves him and his body man. And his body man didn't make a plea because he didn't have a lawyer. Trump claimed that he didn't have a lawyer that was eligible to defend him in Florida yet. You know, a Florida barred, even though it's federal court because it's in the state of Florida, a Florida barred license has to, you know, represent you be the number one lead lawyer in the case because it's in a Florida district. That's just a federal rule. But for the purposes of 
uh, arraignment, you just got to have a barred lawyer. Somebody that knows the law because it's federal court, it's not for the state court. A little, little shadiness, little craftiness, and Trump says, you know, Trump says he fired two of his lawyers, and the lawyer said he quit. I don't know if they were actually barred in Florida or not, but it was a potential loophole that Trump could use to delay, and that's Trump's. Trump doesn't try to win cases. He tries to wear the court down to where they just get tired of dealing with him. And it's basically, let's make a deal. Deal he's not going to honor anyway. But they said, no, you got to put in your plea. Of course, he said not guilty. Now, the short, bald-headed body man, I can't remember. It's Nada, Napta, whatever. He, they said, look, you got to come back because you don't have a real lawyer. So that little ploy didn't work. But this gag order or semi-gag order or instructions to not, you know, publicize anything related to the trial in public. Trump immediately gets in his way, motorcade, you know, cranks up just like he's the president with his, you know, Secret Service escort. They got three big escalators that look alike. Everybody's trying to figure out what escalator Trump said because they, they use a private entrance in the back of the courthouse. The crowd is out on the street. Now, this is the difference between New York and Florida. The crowd in New York was basically anti-Trump, even though Trump came from New York, but they know him. They hate him. The crazy right-wing ultra MAGA mothers in Florida, they were out there protesting to get Trump let go. Wasn't really violent, and I think maybe Trump was a little disappointed with that because, I mean, the whole way, the whole time up, he's been sniping at individuals, he's been sniping at the court, he's been calling his supporters to come out, you know, and be violent, but maybe they just tired of it, they know what happened. On January 6th, they got relatives who saw for themselves. Them people got hung out to dry. And maybe they wanted no parts of that. Or maybe they just wanted to see how far this was going to go. Or maybe they might be losing faith in their orange demagogue. However it was, Trump got to go back to Bedford. Now, when he got to Bedford, after he made a, a, an impromptu stop at a Cuban restaurant in Florida, the Cubanos, the, they, the, the, you know, the Batista descendants in Florida, they love Trump. They love fascism. The, the only difference between them and Castro, they were the fascists that lost and got kicked out. Now, this thing at the restaurant, it turned into a, a, a clown show. You know, the people gathered around and Trump tried to give the impression that he was so endeared to the Cuban Americans because Cuban Americans, they knew what a person was because of what Castro did in Cuba. Either these people either fled or their parents fled and brought them with them. It, it, you know, it's the typical refugee stuff. Now, the, uh, they had a, a rabbi there and it looked like a white evangelical pastor and they laid hands on him and blase, blase, blase. That was another little show. Then Trump hops on his plane and goes back to Bedford. And there's a part two to this video because I don't want to make one segment too long. Trump gives this speech where he basically bitches and moans about everything that has anything against him, but it made one thing obvious. You can mess around, F around, and let Trump go, and by some strange reason, if we're all reading this wrong, and Trump manages to get back in the White House, there will be blood. And that's the end of this section. So, I'm going to say, you know, peace out and God bless for part one. Stay tuned for part two, where I fact check Trump's speech and shows you where he lied and where he's purposely malicious. So join me for part two of Uncle Ricky's House, Trump's Lies.